Hi, I'm Eileen Liu. My name is Jeff Bibicar. I'm Lynn Morris. I'm Nicholas Folks. I'm Tanvi Deshmukh. And I am Neil Panth. And our project is about analyzing the possibility of photosynthetic bacteria on Proxima B. Our goal is to analyze the known environmental conditions on Proxima Centauri B and determine, using examples of photosynthetic bacteria on Earth, whether those types of life may be able to survive in Proxima B, and if so, what biosignatures could be present. Proxima Centauri B is an Earth-sized terrestrial planet that orbits Proxima Centauri, the star that is closest to our sun at about 4.2 light years away. Proxima B star is an M-type star, also known as a red dwarf, and is smaller and cooler than our sun. It's also located in the habitable zone of its star, where liquid water could theoretically exist. To provide some background, a biosignature is a substance, characteristic, or phenomenon whose presence is an indication of past or present life. A biosignature is often classified as such due to it being the result of common biological processes. For example, photosynthetic cyanobacteria produce a biochemical structure called a stromatolite, which would be strong evidence for their presence in an environment. The job of many astrobiologists is to search for biosignatures in order to assess an extrasolar body's potential to house life. After determining the elements necessary for the development of life, we began our research by studying the environmental conditions of Proxima B. By finding organisms that could both withstand and prosper in these conditions, we narrowed our search further. Within a small handful of organisms, we decided to focus on the bacteria Rhodospirillum rubrum, which seemed the most promising. Proxima B is subject to extreme UV and X-ray radiation from its star Proxima Centauri. Because of this, the atmosphere, which is speculated to consist of the lighter hydrogen and helium, could be negligible or non-existent. If a thin atmosphere exists, there could be sufficient pressure to allow for the existence of liquid water on the surface, since the exoplanet is in its star's habitable zone. If surface water does or did at some point in time exist on the planet, then any existing atmosphere may also consist of oxygen or carbon dioxide. Oceans would be able to protect living organisms from the heavy radiation that Proxima B faces. However, there is also extremely strong wind as well as large pressure variations that would affect life. The exoplanet also most likely has a spin orbit resonance with its star, but it's not known what the ratio is. If it's one to one, one rotation to one orbit, then one face would be very hot and the other would be extremely cold. If the ratio is three to two, then the temperature would be more moderate. We found that the bacteria Rhodospirillum rubrum could be used as a proxy to show that photosynthetic life could exist on Proxima B. Firstly, our rubrum is a faculative anaerobe, meaning that it can survive both with and without oxygen. Secondly, it has basic radiation protection. The bacteria has been used in multiple radiation studies and could potentially survive under, under harsh UV, X-ray, and gamma radiation seen on Proxima B. Since Proxima B receives EM radiation from the visible light and near-infrared spectra, the bacteria would be able to conduct a photosynthesis. With the pigment bacterial chlorophyll A, the bacteria can conduct anoxygenic photosynthesis using near-infrared spectra. With the accessory pigment chlorophyll B, the bacteria can also access light from the visible light spectrum. This allows Rhodospirillum to add, use various wavelengths of light and adapt its, to its light environment, increasing its chances of survival on Proxima B. As for the biosignatures found this photosynthetic light, it's unlikely that we'll look for specific colors of photosynthetic organisms, since many photosynthetic organisms can actually adapt and change the ratio of pigments that they use to fit those specific light environments. Instead, our rubrum especially can literally change color depending on its environment. Instead, the surface biosignature that we're talking about is the near infrared edge. So on Earth, there exists a vegetation red edge, a very prominent biosignature of our planet that can be identified by using spectroscopy. It occurs because chlorophyll A, the photosynthetic pigment that is conserved across almost all photosynthetic organisms, sees a large increase in light reflectance at around 700 nanometers, just past the wavelength of visible red light as shown in this picture. There is thought to be a mechanism to protect against overheating, and it's likely that photosynthetic bacteria on Proxima B would ha also have a similarly sharp spectroscopic feature. However, since these organisms would likely make use of near-infrared light, it's likely that this edge would occur at longer wavelengths than Earth's red edge. As for the highlights of our internship, we enjoyed working in teams, connecting biology to astronomy, and understanding advanced texts. We had challenges coordinating virtually and understanding spectral data. 
Here are our personal reflections. Works cited, image citations, and we'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Giada Arni for answering our research questions.